Hey yo guys, what's up and welcome back to Two Toe Tags and Metal Reviews and today we're getting our final review of Immortal Binding by My Dying Bride. So we spent a whole week listening to this album as much as we possibly could and this is our second time around the sun with My Dying Bride. Here it is. So I'm curious to know how this review is going to go. Because the last one didn't go the greatest. It did not. I believe we gave the Ghost of Orion double threes. Something like that. Which is not a good score. No. But uh, I guess I'll open the floor here and say that there was a consistent highlight happening for me on this album, and that was the presence of the violin. Oh, of course. Every time, no matter how good the song was, the violin came in, it was a good part of the song. Yes. Like, that was just consistent. Yeah. Like, Agreed. I, I felt like every time it was used, it was just used really well, but I also feel like maybe the composition of the album lends itself to good violin use, mm -hmm. which I'll kind of come back to in terms of like how the songs are put together. But um, the um, main highlight of the album for me came with this riff right after the middle of the second to three bells, which is super heavy. It's got double kick happening in it. Like it's, it's like, oh, what's this mean, nasty riff? This is part. really cool. And yeah. that would consistently come back, like, oh yeah, this is the awesome part, cool. Mm -hmm. And the issue is I wish more of the songs had moments that were that awesome. Because I feel like some songs are good, just kind of overall as a whole, but they didn't really have too many, like, huge, amazing moments. But, and I, I don't really remember exactly how The Ghost of Orion went, but I, if I recall correctly, the general issue that we had with that album is that it kind of just meandered around, it just had nothing going on. Mm -hmm. This album kind of has that issue, and this is where I'm coming into with how the songs are put together. Almost every song is extremely slow, or at least most of the time is a very slow riff. I kind of feel like the album doesn't need to be as long as it is, because the songs are just that slow. Some of these songs don't need to be that long. So for example, Crushed Embers is the closer for this album, and it's nine minutes long. I really feel like the song doesn't go anywhere, it kind of just bleh. You know, and, and my issue especially comes from that this is the closer of the album. A Starving Heart is a really nice, um, kind of soft track almost. I feel like that would be great as an ending, mm -hmm. especially with how it ends, where you got Crushed Embers, which is longer and it's nine minutes of nothing happening and it ends kind of abruptly and that's the album. Like, I feel like you could have probably switched those two songs and it would have been better. And I did listen to this album doing that. I put those in the in the inverse order and it did feel better. The the abrupt ending of Crushed Ember still felt weird, but I feel like it's a more proper ending with a starving heart. So I feel like like I was almost thinking at one point, is this a mistake? Did they accidentally put these in the wrong order? Because it just nah. feels like it shouldn't be that way. Yeah, I get how you can feel like that sometimes. And you know what? About the songs being long, I get that too. However, this is a band that their their music is basically trying to evoke emotion. It's supposed to be it's a very like emotionally driven band. A lot of doom metal is. It's supposed to like of pull course, these yeah, dark emotions yeah, out of you. Yeah. And the songs being long is not really to and, and you said like how they don't go anywhere and they don't, but it's not because they're not meant to be exciting. They're not meant to be like this big adventure that takes you everywhere. It's meant to just ride this emotion, ride this dull, down, depressive emotion for a while because that's kind of what depression feels like. It feels like something that's dragging on. So they're kind of like yeah. making that into music. It might not sound good, it might not be palatable to the ears, but that's the vibe that they're after. But I feel like you can probably get the achieve the same effect with a five minute song as opposed to a nine minute song Perhaps. that doesn't do anything different. It's still just this one kind of thing going. Perhaps. You have that in five minutes and it works. Does it need to be nine? Because there are songs on this album that actually do go somewhere and have something going on and it doesn't get overly exciting or anything, but yeah. it, it actually has something you can look forward to in terms of like, the overarching experience of a song. Yeah, I think you it know. depends on the listener, to be honest. It can depend on the listener. Yeah. It can depend on the atmosphere. Yeah. I remember I'm listening to this album, like I go out, it's a rainy day and I'm listening to it and it feels a lot better than when I'm like working on something inside or whatever and I got it on in the background. It's a different effect and I feel like this album does lend itself to that a lot. You listen to this on a rainy day, it's gonna hit different. Yeah, it just works like that, yeah. Yeah, but at the same time for me though, 
it hit better on like a rainy day when I'm outside or something. Yeah. But in any other context, it wasn't as effective, which I yeah. feel like is an issue because then it's like, well, I got to save this one quite literally for a rainy day. Yeah, well, people associate things like rainy days uh, with sadness. And this yeah. is a sad a- album. It's a it sad, is for sure. It's a sad it's band. A sad so band. Those now, things go hand in hand. Yeah. That being said, uh, I believe on our first impressions, someone, like we asked like, hey, was Ghost of Orion a dud? And someone in the comments said, yes, yes. it was. Check out a line of Deathless Kings. That's like the best. I didn't get through all of it, but I did check it out, and it was awesome. Like I thought it was way better. Not every song felt slow as a snail. There's cool stuff happening with the guitars a lot. There, I didn't notice any violin, but I feel like the guitar kind of stepped up. Well, this is in the past, mm. but the guitars kind of take place of what would have been violin on like the new album. Okay. So there's more cool guitar stuff happening. And average song length wasn't overly long, so things didn't like drag and meander around all over the place. So, yeah, that is definitely a better album in my opinion. What year did that come out? Do you know? 2006. Oh, so it's it's a uh, it's a later one. Okay. It's later-ish. I mean, 2006 is farther away from today than it might seem. That's true. But, um, but I was thinking more like maybe late like 90s, 90s or something. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's in the late 2000s there. Okay. But um, now one of the singles. If not, maybe it have been the only single, Thornwick Hymn. Mm-hmm. I felt it was a good choice for a single because it's not overly slow and it's got stuff going on. And I feel like the the activity from the drumming really, really helps with that song. And, and I thought it was a pretty good song. Now, I did mention a song last week called Unthrown Creed. And I'm like, wow, it does this cool thing where it starts out, it's going, and then it kind of shrinks, and then it comes back. Like, it, it contracts and expands again. I didn't really find... Like over the week, it kind of like contracted on me and I didn't really find it as interesting as I did last week. Mm-hmm. It just didn't really stand out. It's like, yeah, this is the cool song that does that. It just started to kind of come and go. Okay. You know what I mean? But I mean, for, you know, for other people's first listen, they'll probably notice that it does that. But I don't know if I can speak for anyone else if it, you know, kind of just becomes a whatever song yeah, from there. If them or not, yeah. Exactly, but yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I had I had a decent week listening to this album. There's, I feel like there's highlights and there's lows, like a lot of albums have. Just because you were talking about an uh, uh, unthrown Creed right there, I'm gonna just gonna piggyback off that. It's actually one of my highlights for the week. This song, mm. I thought was one of the best songs on the album. I really love uh, the dynamic that the riffs and the vocals have with each other. They kind of play off each other in a, in a way. I like how the uh, the opening verses and the end verses use the same motifs which is pretty cool. You got kind of a bookend thing happening there in the song. Uh, the bridge of the song hit, hits in a really cool way. And I really love the this like creeping nature of the verses. Like it just, there was a lot of cool stuff going on that was really attracting me. Right after that is the Apocalyptist, which I think is also a great song. Both those songs, easy highlights for me on this album. Um, Apocalyptus has a bit of a different vibe. It's a little bit more hard hitting. It's got a little bit more of the harsh style vocals. Right, because there's like kind of like a clean, uh, drab kind of vocal, and then there's like a harsh, almost black metal type of vocal throughout the album, which I guess this band just does. But this one has more of that harsh vocal, which is kind of cool. Lots of guitar harmonics in this one. Um, I love the um, it's like low tempo, sludgy, uh, like a sludgy groove it gets to, into at about the two minute uh, forty second mark. Uh, the verse that follows that's really cool too. It just Overall, it's just the, the way the sections are sectioned off and the way they bleed into each other. Well done. Overall, this is a really good song. Great guitar tone on it as well. Just really like that one. Uh, Her Dominion and um, The Second of Three Bells are also pretty good songs. Then we get into Thornwick Hymn, Starving Heart, and Crushed Embers. These three songs, I felt like, were just those types of songs that come and go. They, they do a good job at evoking emotions, and you know, it's something My Dying Bride does I feel like better than most Doom bands is like really driving home that emotional feel. But um, as far as the songs go, there's not a lot in them that kind of set them apart and made me feel like this is a playlist worthy song or, Mm -hmm. you know, this has a great element or whatever. Uh, And that kind of sucks. Do you feel that A Starving Heart would have been a better closer? I, I, I don't I honestly I'd have to listen to it again with that in mind but I didn't feel that way during the week mm-hmm. I felt like you know crushed embers is a fine closer although it does end a bit abruptly which I felt was weird and I think we mentioned this on the first impressions last week it ends kind of abrupt 
And, you know, for a band that is as kind of slow and low tempo as this, you feel like they could create a pretty nice outro yeah, which, to, a, to a last like, song. A Starving Heart literally is that. It's yeah, totally so, what would be good as a last song. Yeah, I'll take your word for it. Like I said, if I listened to that with that in mind, I think um, it would probably work, but I didn't really consider that at first. Um, I think overall this album has a good mixture of the doomy stuff and the more aggressive black metal leaning kind of stuff. It's got a good mixture of that. Uh, I like the songs. Uh, each song I think has parts that I like, but some are just way stronger than others. Yeah. And honestly though, at the end of the day, it does. It was kind of hard to tell one song from the, from the next. Uh, yeah. They're all very samey, samey vibe wise. Um, and you know certain things like uh, with the exception of the apocalypse I think that one stands out because it's just a little bit more aggressive and hard-hitting has a little bit more bite to it the rest of the songs tempo wise and just everything they just all kind of ride the same wave I feel like the album even when they do change things up they kind of yeah. try that in a bunch of different places so when they do this yeah. riff it's like what song is this from which one exactly like you'd have a hard time I think if you started in the middle of a song like a random song you'd be like what is this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which one is this unless you, it was some kind of like super highlight moment that you can remember that's right and I think only a couple songs have moments like that so mm -hmm. Uh, with that said, I think I'm ready to rate it if you are. I am. Okay, so, um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think I'll mention one more thing. I think one of the highlights on this album is the vocals. I think Aaron sounds great on this album. I think he sounds really, really clean. He's got a good range and all that stuff. So I think I want to just put a little nod in there as well. Um, but yeah, out of, out of seven songs, I got two highlights, and then the rest of the album is like a hit or miss for me. So with all that said, um, I did enjoy it more than the last one. Thankfully, this is going to get a six for me. Well, I'm in a similar boat in the sense of that, yes, I did enjoy this more than the last album. I do feel like it still has its issues, and it got me really concerned at one point thinking, maybe I'm just not into this band. But I did listen to a line of Deathless Kings. I'm like, OK, so this is like them at their best. Okay. So I know that, OK, I can really enjoy them. But this album, not bad, not like Super duper great. I, it didn't really blow me away. It's going to get a five from me. Well, there you have it, guys. It's a six for me and a five from TV Fish. So let us know down in the comments below what you guys think of this album after a week of listening to it. And if you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and hit the like button. I'm Vile Self. I'm TV Fish. I'll see you guys in the next one.